I'm actually going to do a two-part reaction of a doctor reacting to a neurosurgeon who quit the job over complaints about the profession. His channel's name is Gooby and Doobie. He's an MIT-trained neurosurgeon, and he specialized in things like uh, corrective back surgery or, I guess, spinal surgery, things of that nature. And he's recently become unemployed, and he quit his job, essentially due to maybe um, burnout or uh, maybe midlife crisis and, um, you know, I can understand that being that we're in the kind of the same age group. We're about the same age. But of course, he's at a, was at a higher level of profession. Um, I probably felt some of the same things that he's felt. I uh, went through issues with drinking, issues of gaining weight. And uh, so I, I, I kind of connected and understood exactly what he was saying in the video. Before I go too far, I'm going to give an answer to why this Dr. Webb is on the background. Um, I want to do a reaction really to the doctor reacting to another doctor because that's important uh, to hear his perspective. And he gave a good one. But before I go any further, I'm going to let him. Pathology that correlates with their imaging studies, then I think those patients do really well with surgery. I could do a perfect surgery and some people would get better. Some people would stay the same. I agree. That's what I tell my patients. Surgery, it can make you better. For most patients, if you select the right patient and have the right pathology, the right the disease that we're trying to treat, it can help them make, get better. There are some patients that it can make your pain worse, and that's a risk of surgery, and that's something that I counsel every patient's patient on before we undergo surgery. Okay, so more on Gooby, the surgeon that quit the profession. He was an MIT-trained surgeon who did 10 years of study, of course, on top of high school, and, and he did back surgeries for 10 years. And he ran into an issue where he just didn't believe in the mission any, any longer, and he believed that um, that maybe surgery, surgery was not the answer to a lot of these back problems and a lot of it was just a, uh, a product of American um, poor diet, lack of exercise, stress, things that could, that could potentially heal these ailments on their own and without these sort of, in, uh, these sort of unnecessary surgeries for largely preventable ailments. And I even talked about how quitting smoking cigarettes helped some of my nagging little pain issues that I was having that I did not know uh, smoking exacerbated these problems and that smoking and drinking has all type of problems that um, we don't understand occurs in the body, uh, which, you know, potentially ages us, especially if abused. And there are some patients that don't get better with surgery and that's out of my hands. I realized that early on in practice that I can't help everyone. If a patient has severe stenosis or tightening of their spinal cord, or if their spinal cord has been squeezed and tight for 12 years and they come to my office for surgery, well, that patient probably was a good surgical candidate 10 years ago or 11 years ago, but we're already behind the eight ball. We're 10 years behind. This patient has severe nerve compression for the last 10 years. Whatever I do as a spine surgeon may or may not make that patient better. And that's the complex part that a lot of people don't talk about is that if you delay certain things and if you wait, sometimes your symptoms can be irreversible whatever we do as spine surgeons may or may not make it better at that point now he made a very logical point and i actually i actually understand what both of them are saying because both of what they are saying is very true for one the the, the medical system in america is is full with ailments from people who, who that are largely preventable ailments um there is there is some things out there that just we, we can't control but there is some things that we can such as um dietary a lot of these ailments are related to dietary a lot of these ailments are related to in, in activity a lot of the ailments are related to smoking and drinking a lot of the ailments are preventable and so and, and, and back to what he was saying once you have symptoms of, of of a certain thing you can't wait you have to jump on it like so i do construction i do various things i've been working with you know using my back most of my life and if i feel some type of soreness or injury i get on it immediately because what I noticed was if I had a nagging problem, it would go on for month after, after month if I didn't truly try to address that problem. But once I did, it went away in a matter of weeks. The surgeries that I could do were like going into that house, tearing down that drywall, ripping out the moldy insulation, putting in brand new insulation and rebuilding the wall, but not fixing the leak. Did you hear that analogy? It, Bingo, the that that's the point I always like try to make. And this man's a freaking doctor. I'm a construction drywall, worker. Ripping out the moldy insulation, putting in brand new insulation and rebuilding the wall, but not fixing. My grandmother who lived to be in her 90s told me an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. Coincidentally, she had her master's and an honorary PhD in theology. 
that's absolutely right. This analogy uh, comparing the house to a patient that is 300 pounds, uh, uncontrolled diabetes, has had three surgeries. Y you can do a really minimally invasive surgery or surgery to address a specific symptom, but if you don't correct the underlying issue, which, which is that patient's weight, their uh, comorbidity, their conditions that they have, if they don't address that, they're gonna be right back at surgery. And that's why they call it back surgery. Patients just keep coming back. And those are the patients that keep coming back. People that got better were having a mostly plant-based diet. They weren't eating too much animal foods and they were definitely not eating salty. And they would do things that would make them sweat, like exercise, being outside, hiking like this, uh, going to a sauna, or they live in a warm place. They didn't smoke, they didn't drink much. Uh, they usually had a good social support, loved ones, family members, friends. They would sleep like eight hours every day and they weren't stressed out. Or they, if they had a stressful job or something, they, they, they found a way to be mind. Did you hear what this freaking MIT doctor just told you? I barely graduated from high school. Go look at my first video, look at my second and third video, how I talk about quitting smoking. And eventually I got into sobriety and quitting drinking. I did the weight loss journey. This man connects to my story. He validated my channel. <laughs> but like I said, we're like the same age, man. We're, you know, I, I didn't, it's not because I'm some type of genius. A lot of this is common sense. A lot of this also comes from research with time, talking to doctors who told me that I need to lose weight, stop drinking, stop smoking, etc. And so I took this information and I vlogged about it. So I took something that was absolutely necessary and I, I managed my time and I filmed it. I, I, I filmed and vlogged about my journey and that made it even more interesting. And that's what I was, and that goes back to also, I do videos about having your own YouTube channel. This is kind of like a three part video almost because I get to touch on some of my old videos and I also get to talk about, uh, I also get to link uh, storyline, creating storylines story and, and video ideas. You don't have to do anything spectacular. You can just do life and do it right and film it. And sometimes when you're, when you're on camera, you want to do it even better for your audience. But you want to have the drive to do better for yourself individually. And, if, you know, not only that, but also Before for your family. meditator, like just be present and um, release the stress back into the universe. I agree. Your diet is uh, one of the most important things. What you put in your mouth, um, you know, is extremely important. Your body is a temple. I mean, America is notorious for having fast foods, uh, restaurants on every single corner, and it's killing us. There are a lot of patients that come in with uncontrolled hypertension, high blood pressure, uncontrolled diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, issues with their back and with their other their joints, and it's all because of what we're eating. It's an inflammatory state. Arthritis is an inflammatory state. That's in your hips, your knees, your spine. So what we eat is extremely important. I think there's a lot. Just a quick pause, and we're going to continue on with the video. We're, you know, I'm sorry about that, but. I'm gonna post some of my social media posts that I've been ranting and raving about this. The same stuff they're talking about how a lot of this pain is from implement inflammation that comes from dietary. And it's, it is not just what the type of arthritis you think it is where you're like, you're overworked or like your knee or something or your hip is like, you know, it's, it's bad because it's been overworked in your thirties. No, it's inflammation from what you eat of truth in what he said about plant-based diets and anti-inflammatory foods because this can make situations worse it can make your back worse make your joints worse make your atherosclerosis which is hardening of your arteries which can lead to blood pressure and heart issues it's all interconnected your diet extremely important really felt like the focus of medicine wasn't in the right place it wasn't in healing it was in making money from surgeries and pills and images whatever you can make money from no matter what you heard no matter if people deny it all the time, medicine is a business. People are in medicine to make money. Yes, they're in it to help people and they have this giving or helping mentality, but hospitals, administrators, they're in it to make money. It's a business. So if you're not making money, if you're not busy, if you're not seeing multiple loads of patients per day as an employee doctor, you will get canceled. They'll call it. Now, that being said, I'd much rather this system then be in, you know, as in a, like say, for instance, a third world country or something like that. So we, we can complain about the system, but also we need to be thankful for the system and the medical, medical professionals that, uh, you know, a lot of us need, some of us need, some of us don't. You, you also have to realize that people, the lifespan is higher than what it used to be. So uh, it, we can complain about the healthcare system, but the fact of the matter is, people are to the office longer. and say, hey, Dr. Jones, you only saw 20 patients today. You need to see 30 patients now. Well, hey, uh, administrator, um, you know, I'm, I don't have enough time to see this many patients. I only have 15 minutes to see patients. We'll see them in 10 minutes. And that's what hospitals are, they're about. They're about making money, they're about profit. They're not really in the best interest of the patient. They're in it to make money. And same thing with insurance companies. They're in it to make money. You can. Well, essentially he kept it real and that's why I did a video about with his perspective because it, it does make sense. America is a consumer-based economy. It's a, this, this a capitalistic society and none of this will work if, if there isn't a profit. Even the government, you know, um, they, if, if they, it's, it's a for-profit-based system all across the board. So if, once that breaks down, you know, the whole system breaks down. So it just, that's the unfortunate nature of, of, of what we live in and what we have today, it, it works. Sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or uh, you, you have to be careful what you wish for, or you have to understand what you have before you don't, you no longer have it. All of this money for your insurance premiums and for your deductibles. And when you need to use your insurance, you can't because the insurance is denying your surgery because you didn't go to physical therapy for six weeks, you went for five weeks. They think of every excuse that they can to deny your surgery, even though that you paid um, for years for the medical insurance and they'll deny it in any reason that they can. The other thing is with a surgeon, after the surgery is completed, the insurance company is the last to pay the surgeon. So I did a surgery on a gentleman a year ago. I still haven't been paid. There are some surgeries that I did six. Shout out to Dr. WebMD. <laughs> Literally, what a coincidence, Dr. WebMD. He's getting off his chest right here, Insurance man. company still hasn't paid me. But if I don't pay my insurance premium, 
they'll cut my insurance. I can't use the insurance. If I go to the hospital, hey, I'm only 30 days late for my, my insurance. I can't use it. But on the flip side, if the surgeon doesn't get paid for no nine months of surgery, what do I do? Nothing. I just wait. It sucks. My, my wife, you know, I said earlier that she said, I see what you're going through. I've, I've lived with you through it. You should just quit. And I, I said, what? How, how can I quit? You know, you're not you're not working yet. She was going to school for a second career. And she said, well, we'll be okay. We saved up some money. It's not enough to retire, but something to live off of for a few years. One thing I took away from this video is that um, a lot of physicians, even though he's been a neurosurgeon for about 10 years, he, he noted that he wasn't set financially to retire just yet. Um, that's one of the things that's really motivated me to just be financially savvy and also smart with my income because I don't never want to be put in a position where I have to think about whether I can retire or not. In two years from now, three years, four years, five years, um, if I wanted to quit working and not work at all, I want to be in a position where I can just walk away. If I'm this unhappy, gain 40 pounds, not happy with my job, my position, uh, things are not going well, I want to be able to walk away. And that's one of my goals. And that's Here's the deal, right? I did the same thing. I was working for the railroad, worked there for almost 10 years, working nights, working all kinds of shifts, man, you know, on call. And, you know, at first the money was good for me. It was good, you know? And then after a while, it just started to beat me up, like as far as my personal life and my my my, my health, my mental health. You know, I went to a spell where, where I started to drink a lot and I quit drinking. And so I, I just quit my job, man. I wasn't financially set. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. It's worth more to you to just sometimes start over fresh. You know, I used to work at the company, man. They would have suicide prevention week, man. People would pre commit suicide. I, I believe he even talked about some doctors would commit suicide. What I recommend for students, residents, attendings out there is to make smart financial decisions that will allow you to have that freedom. Um, and that's what I took away from this video. I hope that you have a wonderful day if you're listening to this. And, uh, you know, trust your heart. Trust your heart. Lean on the people that love you. And do what you need to do, whatever that is. Wow. So I, I think this video, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, you know, my overall thought of this video is that he found peace. He found his way out. I know a lot of people suffer and they go through years and years of turmoil turmoil, and um, just depressed and burnt out and they give up, they commit suicide. A lot of people don't talk about the suicide rates. Um, they say that within a, every day there's a physician that commits suicide. You just don't hear about it because of stuff like this. Um, so what I take away from this video is that uh, if you're unhappy, if you're having some issues, if, if you're just burnt out, if you're stressed out, you have to talk to someone. So I think a lot of what he said was actually true about the issues about not I talked about that in my inner demons diet, video I, I never I no longer use that type of phraseology but you can do a basically surgery and it's not help a patient or more issues or the thing. patient's unhappy which leads to another surgery so the main things that I take away from this video are make sure that you're active that you watch your blood pressure your heart rate your diabetes your cholesterol you're eating healthy you're you're walking you're minimizing stress all those things can exacerbate the other one stress can elevate your blood pressure it can make your diabetes elevate it and your cortisol is released it's a stress hormone that can raise your glucose so all of those things have to be optimized i think if you're unhappy you have to just come to a uh, sit down with yourself and you know at your support system and just make sure that you make the best decision for you because you can't help others and patients if you can't help yourself. And this is what I took away from this video. I think it was a cry for help from this uh, neurosurgeon here. Uh, he's found peace, he's happy, he's doing things that he enjoys doing, you know, um, and that's what life is all about. Just finding what your passion is and doing that. That's what I took away. Thank you guys for watching this reaction. There are a lot of people out there that are suffering, may not have an outlet, and you gave them hope. You just told them that there was a possibility. And a lot of people get really nervous about making a decision like this after going through so much training. And there's been multiple times along my journey in my, in my practice that I was like, man, this is not it. I don't want to do this anymore. This is crazy. I'm working all these hours. I haven't seen my kids in a few days. It's stressful. This patient is trying to sue me. This patient had a bad outcome. But I think overall, you have to have an outlet to medicine. Make sure that you have a way to relieve stress, stay active, eat healthy, and just enjoy it. If this is something that you really want to do, medicine is a very rewarding career. It's not for everyone, but it can be very rewarding and life-changing for patients. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. So I don't always do, you know, like controversial stuff like other YouTube channels in order to gain views. I talk about real life issues for the people, um, you know, in the community. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's important to me, fitness, mental health, uh, sobriety, uh, things like that, man, are, are something that we should focus on as older gentlemen and so-called content creators is, is empowerment, self-improvement, and let's not focus on the negative, let's move away from the negative and even shun the negative things that seem to maybe potentially draw the attention the most and try to spread the word of, you know, uh, prevention is worth more than a pound of cure, what my grandmother taught me. And I'd like to remind everyone, everyone watching, if you go back to my first video, I talked about fitness and, you know, exercise and weight loss and things like that, carbs, you know, you know, and uh, and what brought me really into this space was fitness, watching fitness channels. I used to see some of these guys were like, man, I want to do that.
and this that's what brought me into this space and it turned me into it turned into something else and uh you know uh, you know it i respect it for what it is man and uh once we reach that certain age and we've been doing this for so many years we figure out that it's not really truly all about the money the money is important but there's other other factors in there once you touch money and you've spent spent money you know that more money more problems and the true wealth is health mentally physically and spiritually all right everybody you have a blessed night mr 707 is out